Welcome back guys. Today we're at John's place and we're going to feature his 1999 Sportster 1200. 1200. It's uh, Sportsters month guys. Featured nothing but Sportsters. Sportsters everywhere. They're the best bikes. Uh, I guess we can start with the front end. Uh, Wait, before we get to like the, the parts, uh, this is your first Harley? This is my second. Second Sportster. I had another 99 Sportster. Before this, that look really similar but i had to sell it to move to north carolina and then when i moved back as soon as i moved back to california i picked this bike up from a guy in oakland who had it kind of like a bobber style but i always like the uh, frisco skinny chopper look swing arm chopper look so i made it what fit my daily commute and made it work <laughs> This is my daily and this is my commuter, so I've been riding it a lot. On the you said uh, daily commute, uh, was it like a long commute or? Uh, I used to commute from Santa Cruz to San Jose. Oh, dang. But now I just, uh, now I'm mostly just San, San Jose freeways, 280, 80s, 87, whatever. Um, take it to San Francisco, half from Bay, Santa Cruz from time to time, but this bike mostly stays in San Jose. <laughs> Did you uh, give this bike a name? Yeah, uh, the name is Layla. Layla. Uh, inspiration comes from um, Derek and the Dominoes, that song Layla. Oh, nice. And whatever they sang about Layla in the song is how I feel about this bike. <laughs> <laughs> I'll link the, uh, the music video for that song in the video. So, you know, listen to the lyrics. Yeah, old school rock song, pretty sweet. So starting from the front end, uh, I, we have six inches over. Um, a trick tip for all of you that I haven't really seen most people do is that you can push your fork tubes up a little bit and that helps a lot when you, uh, when you encounter speed wobbles actually. When I was commuting on the 17, I was playing around with this distance and after the summit going south, there's those big turns for people who know the 17 and I would wobble there like pretty intensely when this, um, the four caps was sitting flush with the trees, but I started pushing up like little by little. I think this is about like two inches about, and that eliminated that wobble effect pretty good. How did you f figure out that's what you gotta do to, you know? Cause it, the geometry, right? When you have like a um, six, six inches over or eight inches, or you, somebody even four inches, I think, like your, um, your, more of the weight is towards the back. So your front, especially when you're turning, it doesn't have, at least I think it doesn't have that much weight compared to when you have stock forks on. And it, it, it just unbalances the bike a little more. But that's the beauty of choppers, you know? It's like, it's not logical at all for motorcycles, but it looks sick, it rides fun. Like you can ride it, it it's not fast, it's definitely not fast, but it makes it sketchy, so it feels like it's fast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can make fun of this a lot, actually. Uh, at work in, um, in Santa Cruz when I first got it, too. For, uh, I used to go to Recycle Garage. Shout out to Recycle Garage. Uh, and yeah, they did not like this bike at all. <laughs> um, I think starting wrenching definitely started in Santa Cruz. Uh, from Recycle Garage, they taught me a lot. Liza and Emma there, they, they didn't help specifically on this bike, but they definitely helped me a lot on my previous uh, Sportster. Um, yeah. Had the eBay headlight, inspired by Lane's Bowl or buying okay. stuff from eBay. Uh, made it this little simple bracket. So this model is the 1200XLH Custom. So they already had a hole through there, so that was pretty convenient. Just yes. a bolt through it and then a bracket attached to headlight. Um, pretty sturdy? Oh, yeah, yeah it's, it's pretty, pretty sturdy. Yeah. And is it bright enough for like the 17 in the fog? Um it's in the usually it's fine, but during the winter, I don't it, it gets darker, right? And then on 17 sometimes there there's a little moisture and you have like um water coming up especially you don't have a front fender so during the winter th during the summer it's totally fine it gets dark at nine these um but as it gets colder i have this other 
attachment setup oh, the that I made setup. that kind of bolts on to the same spot right here. And it has an additional headlight from Prism Supply and this headlight bracket. Um, these things vibrate and break super easy, especially when you have like an overhang. Yeah. So you, you made a little worked, triangle, right? You braced yeah, it right there. Yeah, braced a little triangle and don't judge my welds. Definitely not a <laughs> welder. <laughs> Uh, attach it to your front, so you have like a, I, I attach it like a dual sport uh, dirt bike front fender, and then just attached it there. And then what I like about this setup is I made these little connectors. Oh, is this plug and play then? Yeah, wow. plug and play. Like they come off Amazon. They usually make, made for cars. So I have this two pin one that connects to it. So there's a Y connector on the fender I just showed you guys. So that will power both headlights. And if during the summer, I want to swap it out pretty quick, I just unbolt it and then plug it back in. So, Functional right there. Yeah. Sick. Highly recommend doing that. Makes life so much easier. You got a plus six over dirt bike right there, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I do have 21 inch and 19 on the rear. So that, that is a pretty dirt bike setup. Yeah, super high clearance. Yeah. So I think other than that, the front is pretty stock, stock caliper. Um, Did you make that fender brace? No, the fender brace came with the bike, actually. I don't know where it comes from. I like how you kept the front brake, too. Yeah. Safety first. <laughs> I, I think. Well, you got to for commuting on a 17. Exactly. Dude, commuting on a 17, I, I pretty much need that. It, yeah. I, there, there are chopper guys that ride it like that, but if once you do it every day, and especially yeah. during the winter, too, Oh uh, man, 17 could be like heaven or hell depending on the condition in the traffic. When it's clear, it's nice. And the it, lanes are small. The lanes are small, but um, it, I think over time you get you kind of get used to it. Like so you know after, what to expect a little bit, right? Exactly, and you know what corners to really slow down. Yeah. Um, and then you know what to watch out for, because there, there's also a lot of fucking dumbasses on 17 that just don't look yeah. for you at all and. Um, have a couple close call on there too. Got some chains to hold up the wires. Have old stuff rabbit bars, and I got make I get made fun of these a lot because they're super skinny. But as a commuter and daily driver, especially in San Jose, splitting lanes is a must. Um, ain't nobody got time to wait in traffic for 40 minutes. These are old stuff rabbit ears, I believe. But the uh, the clamps that they come with, it's pretty. Sometimes it's not enough to prevent like load speed when you're trying to actually turn the bars instead of um, counter leaning. So I got these from Zombies too that clamped on and hold this guy pretty good. And some Buddha balls for good blessing, you know. For good luck. Yeah. Flip the mirror up so it's even skinnier, it doesn't stick out. So I'm not taking out other people's mirrors. Is that a stock mirror? That's a stock mirror, yeah. That's a stock mirror. I I personally really like it. it it's just big enough yeah. to kind of look surrounding. And you really don't need two. I think one is pretty much enough. Functional. Yeah. Stock uh, master cylinder, stock levers. Um, the, the idea behind the bill was not to change as much as possible, just to keep it at stock as possible and still have that like swing arm chopper look. I know it's not a chopper. Maybe down the line I'll make it a hardtail, but for now, Having suspension on the rear is pretty good, especially when you're on 280 and 87. Yeah. Some of those, like, the highway's built on, like, Guadalupe River, so <laughs> it moves all the time. Yeah. I, I, to this day, I still bought them out, and I still rub the oh, fender. Dang. How about when you have your girlfriend in the back? You guys bought them out? Yeah, we bought them out way more when she's on the back. I already adjusted these to the max setting, like yeah. the, uh, the stiffest setting. Before, um, so this tire is relatively new. They're the... Bates Baja, I think uh, you can buy them on lowbrow. Um, but before I had the Avon Speedmasters too, and they're really the really skinny ones. And the profile, I think it's a little little um, lower. So when I had the Speedmasters, it didn't rub the fender, and I was actually running uh, ten inches on the back. Now uh, the stock one, I believe, is eleven and a half of length from like um, hole to hole. So. Yeah, the geometry looks different with a taller suspension too, but 
so far it works fine. I mean, you're just kind of wearing out your tire faster, but other than that, it works pretty well. What'd you get this? This guy. <laughs> This guy came with the bike, actually. Really? Yeah. <laughs> balls of steel. Yeah. Golden balls. <laughs> kind of complements the Buddha balls in a way. <laughs> how, how are you liking the rear tire? Rear tire? I like these. I like these. I don't specifically take them on dirt roads, but sometimes, you know, when you go to your friends and they have a dirt driveway, oh. you know, it, it works fine. Um, but yeah, mostly got them for the looks. Um... They do wear faster than I expect them to, so that's yeah. the downside. Does both tail lights uh, turn turn on? Yeah, both tail light turns on. Let me see. Damn, look at you, safety, dude. Yeah, because in the winter when you do, when you can meet the seventeen, like people don't see you. So yeah. I I had one before, but the angle of this one on the sissy bar is like angled down, right? That's true. Yeah. So people driving like taller trucks, they sometimes I feel like they miss it. Yeah. And they. They get kind of close, especially when I'm braking. So I put another one. I think I got this from the swap meet. I really like these like bullet style. Yeah. Is that LED or regular bulb? This is regular bulb. Oh, this how is regular about the top? Bulb. The top is LED and oh. this is from Biltwell. Got it. Um, I made this bracket um, to attach to the sissy bar. So when you unbolt this, the seat comes off and then the tail light and the license plate comes off as well. So this is like one piece that I machined out from a water jet. Wow. Yeah. I think quarter inch aluminum, I think. Uh, yeah, I, I, I had concerns about it, the vibration breaking it, but it's been holding up like for the past two years, I think. So yeah. pretty good. I'm kind of proud of this actually. <laughs> It's clean. Yeah, and I like the belt wall tail light too because you have a little like- For the license plate, Yeah, right? for the license plate so you can see it. What sissy bar is that? This is from Frado Addiction. It's part of the kit that they have for the King Queen seat. Um, I always wanted a King Queen seat, so I, I, I didn't mind spending, <laughs> like I think it was like 400 bucks on it. Wow. I think that's the most expensive. I mean, for the whole kit, right? Yeah, for the whole kit. That comes with the, uh, the sissy bar and the seat itself. I, I love the seat, personally. It, it, Actually, it's not that bad for uh, the seat and the sissy bar. Yeah, yeah. Got it brand new for all the passenger princesses out there. My girl has complained that this is pretty narrow for, <laughs> for, for their preferences. So maybe for auto addiction, you know, keep that in mind. What's in the, uh, the tool bag? Uh, tool bag, uh, regular tools. Um, it's a Viking bag, huh? Yeah. How do you like it? I love it. It, it. it fell off a couple times actually and held up pretty good. So I have my regular tool kit. I have a rag with extra gas in here because I run out of gas all the time. You know, you don't run a speed thermometer or like a mile tracker, that happens. And when I was building the bike, there was a, um, you know, people were always discussing about having the Voss. Oh yeah. And, yeah. And having it on or not. I ended up just taking it off. It just made it, I, it might be like psychological effect, but I think it ran better. What's your um, um, miles per gallon? I can get, I think close to 35, 40, 35 realistically. So I have a two gallon tank. Um, so 70 miles? Yeah, 70 miles safe. Uh, you can stretch it 80 if you drive like pretty reserved. Cause my Sportster, when I kept my, is it Bose or Voss? Uh, I think it's Bose. Bose, okay. Bose. I kept my Bose and I got like 90 miles per gallon. Dang. Yeah. Okay, that, that's good to know. Cause yeah. I, I never really compared the two. Yeah, cause I, I took it to EDR and then I was like, man, let's test it oh. out, you know? Okay. Let's see how long I'll go before I run out. So right. from empty, from full to empty is like 90 miles. Right, right. Yeah. So I, I guess it helps, but yeah. it's more wiring though, right? There's extra more wires. It's just, for the yeah, just yeah. a little bit more. And I, I think when I was building it, I just didn't know where to put the sensor too. Oh. Like I could have, I could have routed under seat and run longer wires to, uh, to the carpet area. Yeah. But again, that's more. So I, 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 I took my wires in the back down here and it's like, you don't really see it around here. You can see it uh, close to the coil, but not really anything here. Yeah. This is a stock tank, right? This is a stock tank, yeah. Um, I had, I made these little tank lift too. Um, CNC them out out of just quarter inch aluminum, I think. And pretty easy bolt on, had a spacer here. It made it fit a little better. But is there a story for the uh, tank art? Yeah, so obviously you can tell it's not clean whatsoever. The paint and 
Is that Sharpie? Either. Or what is that's that? That's actually, yeah, um, that's a Sharpie work my girl did. Um, she wanted to keep the bike um, Asian style, so did a kind of traditional peony on this side. And then on the other side is more of like a hibiscus. And for her first time working on this medium, she did a pretty good job, I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. I, I like the peony side, the A side better. <laughs> but is she an artist or? Yeah, she, um, she sells stickers. She makes digital art. What's her uh, Instagram, dude? We got to plug her in. Bro. Uh, cool Girl Studio. Okay, cool I'll plug it in. We'll, we'll, we'll plug it in. We'll plug it in. We'll put the Instagram. Yeah. We'll put the Etsy shop. You know. Go support her, guys. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Tell her links, but send her. Uh, send you guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> support small business, you know. Yeah. But pretty much just rattle can spray painted it. You know, you can kind of see the orange peel, but again, not a big time focus on the paint because we know it's eventually going to get dirty. That's the TC Bros uh, air filter, right? Yeah, that's the TC Bro air filter. So I saw Link's play put it on his, so <laughs> I was like, damn, that looks pretty good. But I've been wanting a Trident cycle. Oh, yeah. The airbox Mox one? Yeah, or like the Sugar Baby cycles. Oh, that was nice, they, they make. He just started making the like the round pancake ones. Yeah, those I like, look I love those. super sweet. Yeah. Because even... TC Bro works. This is only like 50 bucks. Yeah. So in... Yeah. I've also been wanting to replace these breather bolts too because they keep spraying oil everywhere. Mm. He was telling me that they make bolts and that have like- route it down. Yeah, yeah. route it down and that's, that works better. And over here, I used to work at a machine shop. Um, I'm not a, really a machinist, more, more like a service guy but I had access to the tools they had. So we had like a lot of Bridgeport CNC we retrofitted and this one came off a water jet that was capable of cutting 200 micron slits. So I wanted to test how fine it is. Yeah. And it was like the, one of those water jets that has abrasives. So it has sand passing through okay. them. So it cut it really easily actually for these pieces. Um, I did like a double coil kind of to symbolize your ups and downs. And behind there is the ignition module. You can see it just like uh, yeah. a stainless steel cut out with, yeah. And it's been holding up pretty good. I was surprised. Some of these are really, really thin. I feel like vibration will break them. And so, so goes this one. I think these two pieces are my favorite pieces on the bike. Got some like Asian style clouds, like Shun Wukong, yeah. you know, like the monkey. The yeah. monkey king, yeah. Yeah, the monkey king. For all the short girls out there, you know, <laughs> like five feet. Um, Originally they go here, right? So they had, uh, at least my girl had a hard time reaching the pegs. So I made these brackets out of these gusts that I got from work, kind of just welded them together, like pretty quick quick and dirty job. Got these pegs out of swap meet. And then, yeah, it, it honestly it looks better in my opinion too. It's further away from the exhaust. They sit more, they can actually sit more back and actually use the backrest. And I'm a short dude too. So when I s support the bike, or like when we're standing still on the bike, my leg goes like around here. So if her leg is here, it kind of oh, like yeah. interferes a little bit. So shifting it back definitely helps too. I'm sure there's a better way of doing this, but <laughs> I think this works for me and it was easy to get the job done. Pipes, they're um, throttle addiction, drag pipes, um, cut the tips off. They had like, um, I think flared ends. Did you paint it? No, it, it came it came black. It just oh, really? wow. yeah, the, but it's not super good quality paint. I mean, I don't mind it. And some of the black started chipping off. It's closer to the engine. Yeah. But works out. Yeah. So, something about these torches is that they're a fucking tank. I haven't done any work to the to the uh, internals. Um, yeah, to the engine at all. It's stock motor. You know, it's just change your fucking oil. Man, the twelve hundred are fast too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, my first one was an 883 with a 1200 kit in it. Oh. And can you tell a difference with that bike and this bike? I could actually. I could. So I, this, this one's faster or no? This one is faster and it's heavier. Oh. At least to me, it, it felt like it was heavier. The 883, for some reason, felt like it was more. It was more nimble in a way, but it could be the setup that I was running at the time too. Story of these is that I was on a solo trip. I rode. Um, my old bike to Canada and back and I, on the way back 
uh, took the one on one and the one, so you pass by Point Reyes. And for people who know Point Reyes, there's like that really scenic corner where you can see the beach for miles. And I crashed on that corner. Oh, shit. Uh, so I low sided. There was a little bit of sand. My tire was already bald. I should have changed it. And I low sided, uh, started skidding on the road. So low sided this way on the, le on the left side. And uh, I was like two meters away from like the cliff. Oh, of shit. The drop off. Because that, and luckily there was like these, they're not sandbags, they're like hay, hay, like rolls yeah. that was on the ground. And that stopped me and my bike from going off the cliff. Oh, shit. And um, the only thing that broke was the shifter. And it was because the shifter was sticking out a little more. And it broke this whole piece off, and I still have that part. So ever since then, I started just. I just ran a bolt through it and put two skateboard wheels. So maybe oh. it'll wear it down before I actually snap it and they actually turn. I have the bearings inside too. Oh, nice. It fits perfectly. <laughs> I don't remember what bolt, maybe like 3.8. Yeah. just runs it pretty good. And How was the crash? Were you able to ride home after? I was able to ride home. I had some rashes. Um, I stopped by San Francisco and got a new peg. And um, it, it, it was a trip because when it broke right here, there's no way to shift, right? Yeah. The only way you can shift is like, to use your heel, step it down, and then to hook it up. Oh. So I was stuck in like second gear on the Golden Gate Bridge, going oh, super geez. slow on the right lane and trying to shift. And then eventually what I had to do was like, I had a good hand at the time, so <laughs> uh, left hand on the clutch and then reach down with your right and yeah. then start like pulling it up and start shifting up that way. Yeah, not, not re do not recommend that. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta do what you can do to get home, right? Yeah. Uh, so after that, I just rode back to Santa Cruz with a broken shifter. Without, honestly, it could have been way worse, like way worse. Yeah. The engine was fine. It had some scratches, but that was it. And um, redid the whole wiring on this bike. So I have some like low brow coil wires here. Um, and then tucked the wires underneath the, the back and um, installed one of those toggle switches. So it kind of works like a car. You know, kind of oh, yeah. sim simplify your like handlebars. Okay, you don't have yeah. the starter on your handlebars. And um, yeah, I don't know if I want to show people this because like anyone can hot just hotwire <laughs> my bike. <laughs> um, yeah, it just bolts onto the to the case actually, and it worked out pretty well. I I, I didn't know where I would put this, and kind of just water jetted this bracket to fit onto the case. That worked pretty well, and never really came off. Uh, this fender, I think, came, got it from a swap meet. I think came off a of soft tail. I really like the um, the flare look the at duck, the end. The yeah, duck I think um, Lowbrow sells the tsunami fenders. Um, I wanted to get those at first, but they were a little short. One thing for all you sportsters people out there: stop cutting the struts. <laughs> <laughs> uh, when I got this bike, the struts were already cut, so I didn't realize it at the moment. But they were supposed to extend out, so I pretty much relied on the sissy bar and the fender to hold the weight of the passenger. Oh, yeah, that's so true. So it's, huh? it's not on the strut. It's you only have one right bolt, and then over here, just spacers, and the bolt goes through the spacer. Yeah, I, don't, I, I, I wish the strut was still there. But this works for now. <laughs> <laughs> What's next for the bike? Next for the bike? I think I'm going to keep this... Um, like this for a while. I do want to paint the sissy bar. Um, I do want to try out some other bars too. I, me and my buddy made this crazy looking bar that we oh, got shit. from the swap meet. It's like originally it, it, it the, um, the tube angled this way, so it's kind of like a wide bar, but we cut it and then welded it to pull back you know i like my rabbit ears and i like sitting back so yeah. this might be a replacement eventually for it i haven't tried it out yet it looks fucking insane <laughs> but <laughs> if it's comfortable you know hey and I, I think i'm not the only guy who's experiencing this because i'm not i'm not super tall like having t-bars just makes you sit too forward yeah kind of like stretches your arm so i always like pull back bars and yeah even got these risers to kind of get them a little even taller to clear the tank. 
That's if, like what, two inch risers? Uh, yeah, I think about that. Zombies got everything for your bar needs. Good prices too. Yeah, very good prices. And maybe eventually, hardtail kit. When I get a little more space, a little more time. Yeah, hardtail and then probably you got to convert the chain too, huh? No, I actually really like the belt because I need, I, I don't need to adjust it all the time. Uh, when I, I, ne I actually never needed to adjust the belt other than taking the wheel, when, when you take the wheel off. Um, I, my old uh, Sportster, I had converted to chain and riding it every day, sometimes you just forget. And when you got loose chain, it's not fun. <laughs> when the chain falls off one time it got too loose actually and, and oh, it fell shit. off and i had to replace the whole sprocket on the side of the road um in the parking lot to get get it back running and yeah so i, I kind of just kept the belt i don't know why people hate on belts but they work pretty good don't fix what's not broken right yeah yeah <laughs> and, and, and again trying to keep it as cheap as possible so yeah. um there's just more parts to put on what i do eventually want to do too is like fabricate something that oh yeah the button right yeah the button so you have like a lever here they have it for prism i think yeah but for the price they're selling it <laughs> yeah. it's like what 100 something right yeah it doesn't feel right all right top three mods on your bike top three mods Ooh. um does aesthetic mods count anything dude okay um i like these two pieces as i mentioned for sure um i think i'm most proud of these guys headlight with the fender setup that I got oh, yeah. here. That's pretty cool yeah, too. That's one of my I, favorite too. Yeah. I still need to figure this guy out because right now just zip tied. <laughs> zip tied. Again, it works. Um, not an amazing fabricator by any means, but whatever gets the job, then it's kind of like my style. Um, oh, I also been wanting to weld this like bayonet I got from eBay. I that's saw cool. that Dennis had his. Well, you know, so before I actually had this plate and then a bracket on the back that attaches this here. Damn, that's just hella tall sissy bar. Dude, it is hella <laughs> tall. And then eventually the vibration got the sheath oh, instead dang. of my will. So that's a compliment, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> the the sheath broke from the vibration before my will. So eventually probably just have it like uh, probably re re refabricate this bracket, make it, made it, make it out of steel and then just weld it to both of these so it kind of holds it but again i also don't want no trouble from chp if they <laughs> see it you still got one more mod dude one more mod um i, I like the passenger uh pegs the, no one i haven't really seen anyone raise it um and i like riding with my girl when she's in the back you know so yeah. it's, it's nice to have her with me and have her comfortable too the paint on the tank it's very sentimental and some of these chains you know she got she got it from korea yeah nothing special it's just all kind of sentimental pieces because we spend a lot of time commuting every day too yeah you see it every day pretty much yeah until i broke my hand <laughs> what happened mountain biking accident broke my collarbone oh dang broke my thumb and it's harder to ride this guy now so i ride my metric bike that was the easier clutch lever instead yeah yeah, that's about it, I think. Nothing too special about it. I think overall, it's pretty stock bike compared to other people's build. It's pretty simple. But I guess that's a good thing, too. I hope it inspires people that... Because most of this is built by hand tools. The aesthetic pieces are with machines. But all you really need is just a couple like angle grinder hand tools, a jack, and then you can do pretty much everything I did on this bike. Um, yep, it's not impossible to build a bike. Yeah, it's not pretty, but... You got to learn somehow, right? I wouldn't consider myself a builder or fabricator in any way, but it's it feels really personal when you have personal pieces on your bike and it kind of stands out. Most people, who when they see my bike, they, they would, first thing they notice are these pieces too, and that makes me pretty proud. Yeah. No, yeah. those are nice. Recycle Garage taught me a lot of just confidence and how to be comfortable with yeah. Just be careful, tools. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just take your time. And like YouTube mechanic is a real thing. Lane split definitely inspired a bunch of this too and give, give, give me a lot of confidence seeing how like everyone did it in their garage. I think at the time your, your daytime job wasn't even YouTube. So yeah. it, it was like, yeah, 
you just need a you just need some space and some tools and that's all you need So obviously for the lane split video, we have to move shit outside because <laughs> it's a pretty small garage. Um, mountain bike for for the weekends, and then the KLX 250S. Started learning how to ride dirt bikes, so nothing too crazy. It works, four stroke, not super powerful, but it's enough to have fun. Yeah, can still pop the clutch and do wheelies. Street legal too. Street legal, yeah. Registration is super cheap. I think that's it. Yeah. Well, yeah, thank you for showing us your bike and your garage, man. Thank you for coming.